Welcome to the CEO Pulse podcast. So we have Matt Beans and Catherine Angle. It's uh, it's it's really cool. I mean, we've uh, I've known you guys for 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 a while now, and we actually met in a different industry, and then you guys ventured into um, doing your own thing, and that's that's really what uh, what triggered my uh, my interest, my yeah. my curiosity here. It's uh, you guys are at the beginning stage of what looks to be a really really cool. Uh, uh, one transition in your life, but it's it's uh, the makings of a business that's not really that's not really um, um, too niched out yet. Yeah. So um, yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for having yeah. us. Appreciate it. <laughs> so um, yeah, if you want to just kind of kick it off with a little bit of background on, on each of you, and then and sure. then we'll we'll tap into the, cool. the question Thanks. section. So you first. So um, you know we're both young. You can see, you can hear it in our voices. <laughs> Um, straight out of high school, I actually studied welding, went to school for welding, um, ended up going to college. That wasn't my thing. Chose seven different degrees in one year, and I was like, Mom, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's not this, right? I uh, came back and actually started uh, as a welding inspector working on power plants and you know pipelines and different uh -huh. things. Um, and I had a lot of time on the night shift when I was doing that. Like I, I worked night shift because I made $2 an extra hour. Like, and, an hour more mm -hmm. and it was easier work i didn't have the mm. sun i wasn't lifting anything heavy didn't have to deal with management nothing work smarter not harder uh, yeah so i was making more, <laughs> more money doing that so i was like i'll do it but i had a lot more time because i would literally sit in a truck and watch the charts from the things that the guys would set up for day shift mm -hmm. and so i started reading books listening to podcasts learning about sales mm. long story short got into real estate you drank the Kool-Aid. I drank yeah. the Kool-Aid, yep. Um, so went all in on that, and I'm still practicing real estate, still doing flips and rehabs. Um, but ultimately, that's what brought us to where we're at now with this business, which is you know bookkeeping for real estate investors. Mm. Um, and I, I couldn't do it without Kat. So Hi. Kat's really the brains behind <laughs> all of this. Um, hey, Kat. Hi, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, just a little bit about me. Um, we're from the same hometown, so we didn't meet each other actually until I graduated high school almost. Where's that at? Uh, Kingman, Arizona. Kingman. North, yeah. So he was um, a senior at the same time I was a freshman, but we never crossed paths at all, same high school. And uh, then I met him hmm. the summer after he came back from his first year of college. Yep. So uh, I don't know how that ended up <laughs> just happening, but um, so we just met that way um, eventually we moved here to phoenix and um, matt kind of was the networking face of getting into real estate i'm more of a systems bookkeeping kind of person and so uh, he introduced me to a lot of the people that i know now and um, introduced me to uh, my previous boss that I ended up doing transaction coordination and bookkeeping for real estate um, and just learned a lot in that position and that was super helpful. And then um, when Matt started doing flips, he was keeping everything on spreadsheets and things were getting lost and I was like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is what I do, so let's take care of it. And so. Um, just him talking with other investors in the area, uh, nobody has it in check. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where the idea blossomed of, hey, here's a problem and we have the solution. So mm. I, I, I love it. It's, yeah. uh, it's interesting how, um, how, you know, often when you, see, when you see a business and it's all laid out and it's, it's already, you know, humming and, and producing and you yeah. have employees and everything. People think that they almost come out of the, you know, come out of the box Woodworth. like that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's not. It's really just out of finding um, a problem, an issue, something that you can solve. In this case, for example, you solved it for him. Yeah. And he's definitely a people person. Yes. Um, <laughs> and and it, uh, th there is a tendency in, in, in entrepreneurship or, or, or owners to be, you know, the, the scattered type. Sure. Um, there's always that need for a counterbalance usually and when you have that dynamic um, yeah. unless you find it somehow that you you know we, if you ground yourself with something else but yeah. for the most part having that counterbalance to pull you back and then keep you in check in the areas where I mean frankly you're gonna suck at yeah it, it, I mean that's what creates a great great team um, we had another uh, we, yeah we had another couple here um, which is somewhat like that a while back, uh, Jared Dallas and Danny uh, Crowell. Yeah. But they're, I mean, they're just, they're kicking ass in their field, and, but that's that's also what they create. They create yeah. a really, really good balance, really good counterbalance um, between the two of them. 
Um, yeah, but it, it's really cool, and I love it that uh, that uh, you guys. I mean, we get to tap into you guys' experience and and see actually where you're at. Um, at this point, because it's still through the growing pains of, of, of you know, you're, you're midair. You haven't, oh, yeah. you just jumped. You haven't landed. You haven't figured out, you know, the full route yet. Um, although, I mean, you have to be the most prepared uh, guests that I've had on the Amazing. show. Like, yeah, yeah, this is this is like 17 pages of, of business plan. And, and, and if you can't see it, I'm going to make a noise so you can hear it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty much you have your first year laid out. And I sure. think that's what it takes. It's it's to have um, to have well, you want to have a vision of that business, but you want to have somewhat of a pragmatic approach Absolutely. to it as you're coming into it. So going so going into it, it's easy to look at, you know, like the real estate goal. My real estate goal is 16 million in paid off real estate mm -hmm. that's cash flowing. Yeah. Um, it's easy to look at. Oh, I want to be a millionaire, a billionaire. I want to make. I want to run a 10 million dollar business, have a you know 50 million dollar exit, whatever that <laughs> thing is, right? I want to run a gym and have seven coaches and do all of this stuff but that doesn't happen in year one mm -hmm. right year right. one i mean i mean it's our 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 month first month which we actually set for november 1st because things you know we thought weren't going to go as fast Play as they out. ended up being yeah. it's literally setting up our website getting three clients um doing our routine marketing that we have set up getting business insurance if we need it like <coughs> very small practical steps and breaking it down. Uh, we actually have another sheet. I didn't bring that because it wasn't really important. But who's <laughs> going to do who's going to do what, right? Yeah. yeah. Who's going to do the marketing? Who's going to go create the website? Yep. Is it going to be us? We suck at creating websites. So we're going to hire somebody. How much are we going to pay? Um, and looking at the nuts and bolts, crossing the T's, dotting the I's. So having that big vision in five, ten years. Mm -hmm. But what does year one look like? Oh, absolutely. And right now, it, it's especially being the, the way the temperature, everything, you know, the temperature is everywhere, you know, socially, economically, just the world is a mess right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, COVID <laughs> came in and then nobody was expecting it back in March. Just, you know, worlds got flipped upside down. Yeah. Um, so that's I mean, that's a very real thing right now. It's hard to uh, to build or, or put together a long term vision for anything. anything. I mean, for long term sure. hell, long term in real estate, you're talking like two weeks. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane right now, but it's, it's, uh, it's a reality of it. I think, I think that it's really cool that you guys are, are coming at it from, from that perspective and, and not just, um, uh, I, I personally, I made the mistake of just kind of flying, you know, through the seat of my pants and, and you know, for <laughs> when I first launched into it, I didn't know, you know, what, what I was good at, what I was going to, what I was going to end up doing, uh, okay. in terms of responsibilities and tasks, but you guys have it, have it laid out now. This is this is a pretty. This is not normal. <laughs> it felt this necessary. Is, yeah. this is, so this is yeah. So this is not. It's not okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna jump and, and then have my own business. Sure. And then the first thought that usually comes to mind for anybody you know tr in thinking or con contemplating entrepreneurship, it, it's not to sit down and then figure out your your one and then lay it out and then do deadlines and benchmarks and and, and all that stuff. It's it's to hustle it until something clicks. I mean, that was my sure. approach. Um, it, it can get expensive, a lot of headaches and everything. But this is pretty, this is pretty, um, it's a pretty good start. How did you guys figure out that you needed to, to do something like this in order to, you know, paint that clear picture? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, for us, really, like, it, uh, this was a, like, after hours kind of thing. Obviously, we were both working during the day and coming together at 7 p.m., 7.30 um, and Sometimes till midnight, midnight one, one, two, two a.m. <laughs> yeah, right. So it de definitely was a side hustle at the beginning, which, um, yeah, we are very fresh. So maybe it was a month and a half ago now, right? Um, that uh, we would come together at night, and it would almost be okay. We want to do this, but there's two people. So for me, like I'm very stickler on okay, like whose responsibility is what so that I don't have to check with you. Mm -hmm. So um, that was kind of like where it all started and maybe that's like a personality trait that you need in your business partner, but um, just that we had like checks and balances that I knew he was taking care of some things and I knew I had responsibilities to um, take on and just kind of uh, learn everything that we were doing, right? Because in business and marketing and all of that, you're doing everything as an entrepreneur. It's oh, not yeah. just not just the business part. So 
Um, we definitely had a learning curve and still are learning some things that we have to implement, but um, it was just kind of let's assign each other stuff and if it gets overwhelming, then we'll come back together and reevaluate what we're doing. Did I go so for me, there were two things that were really important for me. Mm -hmm. One, we're in, a, we're in a partnership, right? Yeah. Yes, we're in an a, a intimate relationship romantically, but now we're in a business partnership. Right. Um, and anybody that's in the business world or personal finance or anything knows Dave Ramsey, the only ship that doesn't sail is a partnership. <laughs> and so for me, this is a lot more Thanks. than a business plan. This is, this is accountability. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is clarity. Hey, we're going to go start a business. How do we know if we're succeeding? It's month two. Yep. How much money did we think we were going to make? Mm -hmm. How much, you know, things get so crazy and the, you got to put all these fires out and all this stuff needs to happen. How do we know if we're making progress? Let's look back what we agreed on and say, yes, we did this. Yes, we did this. Yes, we did this. Or no, we didn't. Why not? Let's figure out how we're going to make it happen. Mm. The other thing is, for me, <coughs> and I think both of us, this is a lot more than just bookkeeping, right? We're targeting real estate investors because I love real estate investors. Mm -hmm. The way they think, the way they operate, the way they run their business, it's not an easy business to run because most businesses, when you build them, you're building an asset to sell. Right. In a real estate business, you're acquiring assets to sell. There aren't very many wholesalers that are going to go and build a wholesale company and sell it. They're going to go build their wholesale company, do some flips, do some rentals, and then eventually maybe sell the rentals. Right. Right. So it's a very unique business um, in many aspects. You have to raise a lot of money all the time. Mm -hmm. Hard money, private money. Like if you want to expand and grow, a quarter million dollars really doesn't go that far. So the demands of money uh, is what really intrigued me. Because as a, as a flipper, which right now is kind of the world that we're working in a lot, mm -hmm. you know, the flippers are looking at how do I go from flipping three to five homes a, a year to 10 or 15 mm -hmm. cruise money deals. <coughs> the crews are kind of easy to get sometimes. Um, you can go to Home Depot. You can just drive around and see the truck and call the number on the side of the yeah. truck. That's how we've got crews. Right. Um, the deals are kind of easy to get sometimes because call up the wholesalers, go to some meetups, do this, do that. But when it comes to raising money and you're trying to get money for cheap, it's easy to get the high interest money, the 10, 12, 13, 15 percent. But when you're trying to go after six, eight percent, somebody that's going to write you a million dollar check to go put in your bank account that you can use at your discretion. Mm -hmm. What's your P&L look like? Oh, yeah. How much gross revenue have you done? What is your expense ratio? You know, what are all these different things? And a lot of the guys in this space, they're either one, not doing it or two, they're doing it on spreadsheets sometimes every other month <laughs> and just throwing it in. Right. So we're my focus is creating this and getting these guys so lined up and in tune with themselves. They have extreme clarity in their business so that way they can make incredible financial decisions to grow and scale Two take them away from doing the bookkeeping, take that stress away so we handle it, they go do more deals. And three, yeah. we're gonna get everything put together. Our two, year two probably goal um, is to start going and me physically going and meeting with the bankers with five, 10 clients and saying, hey, I have these 10 clients, these are all their books. How much money can we give them because they're Set investing in real estate yeah. and just setting it up. So, so you have this, this this funnel i mean it's really a funnel of a vision what i'm what i'm catching here For sure. mm -hmm. and uh, there's i heard this a long time ago and it really i, I think it, it, it embraces everything that i do um in terms of, of the field of real estate i love being a real estate I did two business in real estate and then the uh, the practice and but it, it's um people think real estate and then most people think transaction and uh, oh yeah you have to deal with inserts you have to deal with inspections and then sure. and, and all, all the uh, the 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 tasky stuff of, of things right mm -hmm. but there's so many there's so many different things that you can do within that field i mean take you for example i mean the, the stuff that you're tapping into i think it's super creative uh you're definitely solving a problem because you know a lot of people go to just general accountants um you know for the books but if, if you have for somebody sure. that's specialized i mean they're they're gonna they're gonna want to go you know that way right for sure. uh Hopefully. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. so so uh so um, 
to add on top of that, it's not just, I mean, that's, that's almost, I mean, if you break it down in, into halves, that's like the first half of the business because what you're talking about right now, it's, it's, uh, it's really that, that other missing part that's the leveling up, the scaling up part. Uh, which I mean, I think I think it's 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 insane. Now, um, overall, uh, it, it's uh, it owner wise or, or business owner experience wise, it, it's it's uh, we just do you have a lot, a little? Have you owned you know had any other businesses in the back or in the past? I'm sorry. No, just uh, flipping flipping houses. I've started a couple couple LLCs here and there to try this, try that, and they've yeah. all failed. And, and we talked oh, about yeah. this, and we talked about <laughs> this a, a while back, but um, but so it was kind of like a trick question. But the reason I ask is, uh, where have you gone to build up your your um, your idea machine, your idea basis, your thought process up to this point? Because you guys have a pretty advanced thought process. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, uh, looking at everything that you're doing, the approach that you're taking to things, it's very methodical, you guys are moving fast. Um, it, it's fast and steady. I mean, what I'm looking at. So, yeah. so that that takes a certain type of buildup. I mean, people don't wake up in the morning and they're like, all right, oh, cool. This is what I'm gonna do. And I'm it's gonna all, do yeah, this yes. today. And, and, and just walk around with all this shit together. It's not like it just doesn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Um, so, um, where is that coming from? Sure. Um, for me, like I think a lot of it is just like how I grew up and everything. I have two mm. teacher parents, and we were all about education and just being very organized about everything and that's kind of where a timeline like this comes in and um, I just like really enjoy it. I'm a systems person as well. Um, I actually did go to college for a month for accounting but dropped out as well. So, um, Did you have seven majors that you went through? No, no. I, I, was, I was like, man, I'm going to take accounting and, and just rock this out. And I graduated high school a full year early and then I went to college and tried to do the same thing. And it was just an overload worth of work. So <laughs> stressed myself out too much. But um, yeah, just in in like the way I grew up, like we were all about education and just like, being like very like present and wanting to like figure things out, like mm. problem solve in that way. And so that's where I came from in terms of businesses. I tried to start um, like a t-shirt business when I was 16 mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, definitely like fell on its face but that's probably the only venture I tried um, Matt's got plenty more under his belt but yeah just the moving forward and like always progressing kind of thing Figuring is where, where I come from yeah. my main philosophy in that and I think one the, the couple things that it took is one faith right faith that the guys on the podcast the guys that are running the billion dollar businesses you know, the Andy Frisella, the Bradley, the, the, the Ed Milets, you know, these guys, mm. the Raphaels, the Cody Spurbers, the Brent Daniels, you know, the guys that are ahead of us, regardless if it's one or two steps or 400 steps, right? There's right. level to this thing. Um, one, that what they're saying is true. And two, I'm going to keep this super simple. Invest in yourself first. I can't tell you how many people. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people look at us, even where we're at now. Which, I mean, I feel like we're not very far. Yeah. In the process, <laughs> not right? at all. Like we're two months deep into our business, and I'm I'm about a year and a half deep into real estate. We're not very far, but they see that we're doing it and we're being somewhat successful at the start. Um, that's because of thousands and thousands and tens of thousands and twenties of thousands and thirties of thousands of dollars in courses and books and hours of staying up late at night and reading those 10 pages and going and getting the workout and eating well. And, you know, when you read about personal finance, like doing it, cutting mm -hmm. out, literally cutting out the coffee where, you know, maybe in five, 10 years, cutting out that five, $10 expense isn't that important. But at the start, when I started making $9 an hour, that $10 coffee is an hour of my time. Take out taxes. It's two hours of my time. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So, so, keeping it simple invest in yourself first if you're if you're listening to this watching this go buy the book go pay for the the audible subscription go take the course go spend the 500 a thousand eight i mean i've spent in just in online courses and in-person courses at least thirty thousand dollars yeah <laughs> uh, credit cards financed it like whatever it took 
because I have, you know, the million dollar dream. Yeah, perfect. I love it, man. It kills me to see how people won't spend um, the, uh, the uh, you know, the $15 a month that it <laughs> takes to do, do free ads and, and whatever, yeah. uh, or, you know, the, the credit for the Audible, uh, but they'll do it on, you know, I don't Something know. Something else. Yeah. <laughs> One thing, oh man, I have <laughs> this is this is this is a trigger for me. All right, somebody who's really close to me, big oh, into no. video games, big <laughs> into video games, um, but they uh, they <laughs> they'll spend money on V bucks. You know what V bucks are? I have no, no idea what that is. Good, thank you. <laughs> no idea. Thank you. That's a blessing. <laughs> v bucks apparently they're like uh, um, online coins, and I'm not a okay. gamer, so I mean like, the only reason I know this is because I see it. But they'll spend money buying online coins so they can buy shit for their like avatar and, and Got yeah. It. Okay. But they won't spend money on growth, on like on an audiobook, on something that can really get them out of the like the, out of the hole. It's like, oh man, it just it kills me to see that that backwards thinking uh, oh, process no. in place. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so what it takes me back to t is that I, I think one of the things that people are seeing in you guys, and, and I see it, I mean, the, you know, in the conversations that we've had and everything, it's, it's, um, there's a difference between being interested in starting a business and being interested in, in wanting to improve and do something better and then sure. having you know, that imagery and, and um, kind of letting your Im imagination and wishful thinking go um, and then holding on to that. That's being interested. But I think being committed, on the other hand, it's completely sure. different. That's when you stay up until one, two in the morning. That's yeah. when you spend thirty thousand dollars in personal growth. <laughs> That's when you figure out your shit like this, and then you lay it out and you take responsibilities and actions for each side, and you have it all, you know, packaged up, wrapped up, and ready for, you know, for the next step. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, I think that's what's happening. One of the biggest lessons, if, uh, you know, that I think I can take away is the, the level of commitment that I'm seeing in you guys sure. to make this vision work. Absolutely. I want to hit on the education thing one more time. Yeah. My, when I dropped out of college, um, I had already spent $20,000 in year one. Mm -hmm. So I looked at this thing as a financial thing, right? I knew I wanted to be a business owner, entrepreneur. Like I knew that's what I wanted to do. I didn't know how, but, sure. but I looked at, okay, if I learn this, you know, the college course, what am I going to end up like? Mm -hmm. And it's like the natural progression is you go to college and then you get a job and you go become accountant, you go do this. And then let's say, you know, a lot of these guys, the professionals, the, the doctor, the lawyer, the accountant, you know, a lot of the professionals that require a college, um, they go and they start a small business and they don't really learn how to branch that off into three, four, five chiropractic practices, right? And so I never wanted to be the specialist, as in I don't want to be, I don't want to limit my growth to me. I want to mm -hmm. create a, a framework of opportunity for the analytical people to sit down and for the, the, the real estate investor to have somebody to sit down. You know what I mean? It creates opportunity for both sides. Um, but as far as education, look at what the ultimate goal is if you learn this. Yeah. If you learn how to be the best welder in the world, you're going to go be a welder. If you learn how to, you know, go... I don't, I don't know, like go how to know how to lay carpet. You're gonna be the best, you, you know, you're gonna be the best carpenter in the world, or you know, I think that's wood actually, carpentry. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Car let's say carpet layer. Yeah, carpet layer. <laughs> right. world, right? Be the best in, carpet layer. In all, yes, yeah. in all the land. Yes. But, if, but if you learn how to, you know, you learn how to sell, market, network, um, create your LLC, set up your books, you know, all these small tasks that you need to manage and you learn a little bit about each one and get really good at networking and sales and people and psychology, now, you, now you're a business owner. I, I think, yeah, I think you're on the right track. So, so I'll add on to that. I, this is, this is, um, this is my, my take, right, on entrepreneurship or being a business owner and, and ha your business and employees and everything. I think yeah. you can't just um, delegate everything without no. knowing what's happening. You don't have to be the, as, an, as a business owner, you don't have to be the expert of things, but I, I I feel like we just got to know enough to be dangerous on it. For mm -hmm. um, yeah. To enough to be um, able to, to keep track of accountability, at least at a COO level. Yeah. Um, you know, CEOs and, and you know, visionaries, they're, you know, big picture. And, and that's, I mean, that's a different stage that I think comes after the trench work. Sure. Um, but it's, it's um, on the, uh, through the progressions of the business stages, I, I think that's one of the, one of the key things. Mm -hmm. Just know enough. 
um, to so that you're dangerous, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and if I mean something happens, especially during the like stage one, stage two, where, where you're building up your team, where you're building up your processes and figuring out how the whole thing's gonna look like, um, something happens, somebody doesn't show up, or, or you know, you can come in and fulfill. Mm -hmm. Like you fill up the gaps and you make it work. Um, but it's it's. Uh, I think the the um, one of the mistakes that happens quite often is trying to delegate too soon. Mm -hmm. um, for sure. <laughs> and and like, all right, I don't I don't I don't understand how this thing works at all, but I'm gonna I'm gonna delegate it out. And then you don't know if you know what's happening is a good thing, a bad thing. You're gonna scale eventually if you put you know no, enough money into it, enough people right. into it. Um, <laughs> but I mean, so scaling may not be an issue if you have you know some some fun to back you up, but. You can scale chaos, or you can scale uh, an actual business Forget process, right? Yeah, yeah, one or two. So, mm -hmm. uh, totally, totally with you on that. Love it. Um, so, how scary was it? Because you you both had um, uh, you know jobs before before you leaped into this. How yeah. scary was it, and what was it really that kind of pushed you over the edge sure. when it came to like, all right, cool, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this and then jump all into this. And this is us. That's this is our world. We're betting on ourselves now. Cap's probably gonna have a better answer. Uh, for this. Yeah, I'll go first. Huh? Well, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep mine really short. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I can always go back to being a loan officer. Mm. I can always go back to being a welder. I can always go back and call somebody up and be a wholesaler or sales or whatever. I can always go back and do that. Mm. This right now at 24, 21, 25 years old, I'm never gonna have this opportunity again. Oh yeah. Wow. All right. It's tough to pay back off Boom. of. Boom. But yeah, yeah. geez. Um, for me. <laughs> Follow that one, Kat. Yeah. I thought be like the total opposite. I was terrified, man. Like, um, for me, like, I don't have the sales skills. And I know that that's not a strength of mine. And I haven't spent $30,000 on building myself up in those areas. What my skills are is the like organization and coming into pretty much any business and being able to say, hey, like, we've got to do something with this, right? And it should not be this hard. And so for me, like my expertise is in offices and organization and all of that. And so, um, and another like weakness of mine, I would say is, uh, maybe a strength and a weakness, but is loyalty. Like when I have been working for companies, like I would do anything for that company and I'm there like through and through and just want to see like that company just go as far as they can go um, but with that and like wanting to start my own thing it was almost like I'm kind of like fighting this part of my identity of like I told people I was committed to this and I'm going to stay with this and now I'm changing my mind and so that was like something I wrestled with pretty hard not that it was maybe it was like a big deal but it's just something that I wrestled with of like I'm fighting this like piece of me that I think is always going to be part of me but I'm going against it. And, and, and so, was that on the loyalty part? Yeah, that... for sure. Um, just because it's almost like uh, I felt like I was giving up mm. trying to start my own thing. Um, but if anybody else would be looking from the outside, you know, it's all excitement and all like support. But it's just like there's a little bit of fear there of like, what if I don't make it? What if I don't succeed? And I don't have enough money in my savings account to support myself while this business is growing and all of that. So um, ultimately, like it, it, what pushed us over the edge and myself is just the amount of work that needed to go towards this business now because we did have to learn the marketing and I do do all of the bookkeeping for the clients and as he was networking and we were just kind of starting up, it just bloomed into this unstoppable thing of all these people needed this obviously that's why we started and it just came a lot quicker than I expected so mm. I had like a four month <clears throat> plan of like easing into it and it almost was just like no. I'm throwing my hands up man <laughs> like I don't have enough time I don't have enough hours in the day to do both anymore mm. and that's just kind of like when I made that decision of okay, now I see it. It's it's so overwhelming now that I see the path. And so... It, it's pretty interesting what happens when you take action and you get the ball, I mean, the gear yeah. rolling. Mm -hmm. It's like the snowball effect. I mean, you, you just throw it down the hill and then you see it get bigger 
and bigger and big. bigger. And next thing you know, it's just hauling ass, and it's just yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, how do I stop it? Do I want to stop it? Yeah. Like, I don't think I want to stop it. Like, you know what? I'm gonna run after it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not gonna stop it. And and yeah. uh, I think I think that's that's part of the momentum that that really it's it's hard to it's hard to tap into that momentum. I mean, for sure. We uh, and, and a lot of a lot of the the commitment, the level of commitment that you guys have. I think plays into it. Yeah. Um, it's uh, so. One thing I was thinking right now, as you were going uh, through that, was was I mean that, that same level of loyalty, sure. um, and same level of commitment, and dedication. That's what's going to create the culture that you guys are going to put together oh, uh, yeah. with your people. I mean, I went through some hard times in my previous business, um, and really, what kind of kept it all together was just the 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 culture that we had within within the. The family. It wasn't. That's awesome. It wasn't uh, one of those places where it was, and you just clock in, clock out. I mean, people sure. actually cared about what they were doing, Absolutely. and it's. Um, I mean, you guys have seen me how I when I when I have a client, I have a client, and I like. Lazy. You're locked yes, in. I'm locked yeah. in. I ha he, he, that's that's a level of, of care that I have with with the people that I, with my clients, right? The people right. that I that I that I take care of, and um and I do the same with with uh, the people that work in my companies. Sure. And so that puts together this this um, this expectation of, of anybody that comes in um, gets kind of like adopted into that uh, sure. into that vibe, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and uh, having that I mean having that um, genuineness about both of you and then playing uh, playing the strengths of that into into the business and tapping into it and not really pushing away from it, uh, but embracing it I think it's gonna. Be one of the big, uh, biggest tools that you can, you guys can have whenever, sure. whenever you know anything hits, whenever change hits like COVID, whenever you get, you know, sign blighted by something you weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. Right. But, uh, but yeah, no, that's awesome. One. And I, I, Sorry, I think that um, <laughs> having your commitments clear is very important. One of my commitments to our business is not growing too fast. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're at a point. You know, it's this is our business. This is our team. This yeah. is like this is everybody in it. Yep. And you, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so so with Cat doing a majority of the bookkeeping and me helping with you know pretty simple tasks when I'm able to jump in, um, just to help her out and relieve that stress and that pressure. It's we can't we're not bringing on more clients, right? We need mm -hmm. to get through the the mess of you know what we've taken on now, the responsibilities we have now, without bringing on more responsibilities that we know we can't handle. Mm -hmm. With that, we're going to get them ironed out. We're going to get that shirt ironed out, and we're going to go buy more clothes. We're going to go get more clients. We're going to, you know, go find more problems to solve. Bring it on, and next thing you know, we're going to have enough money to where, hey, we need more help. Mm -hmm. For sure. And now we can train somebody where Cat's not so overwhelmed. I'm not so overwhelmed, and those new clients we can kind of pass on to them, and now we can manage the workflow of each other. Yeah. Because if we go and we go bring on 10 more clients and double our business in the next 30, 60 days again, and we haven't trained somebody, we haven't brought well, in If you say yes, on. you got to fulfill. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And so that's something that we're like very conscious of is yeah. how much time are you spending doing this? Yeah. It's, uh, I have a, a real hard lesson that I learned exactly on that topic. <laughs> and and the, what I was saying right now about the culture of the, the company pulling you through some of that, some of that stuff, oh, that's, yeah. that's really kind of where I learned it. But I had, um, my previous business was a, a medical transportation business, and I, I was able to lock a contract that, um, that doubled the business flow overnight, practically. Wow. They, I mean, we had, we had some room to improve. I mean, we could still, you know, add on top of the volume that we were serving on daily. So sure. we were like, yeah, we want a little more, maybe 30% more. <laughs> uh, but they, like 100. Yeah, yeah, well, no, they doubled it, literally oh, sure. doubled the sure. amount of calls that we were running. And that type of business, I mean, to, to fulfill more, you had to hire more and yeah. then and more vehicles. And I mean, your, over, your overhead was, was, yeah, it just went hand in hand. Um, so it wasn't digital, it was brick and mortar business. Yeah. So like everything, if you wanna serve more, you gotta ex you know, spend more. Yeah. Um, so what happened was that I got excited, I said yes. And, and I had, that's where the big idea of controlled growth landed on me. Uh, <laughs> nice. Oh shit, I should have bought those $30,000 worth of, uh, worth of uh, trainings and stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, but that's, that's where the, uh, I mean, I learned controlled growth the hard way. I said yes, sure. and then what? I had to fulfill. Right. Mm -hmm. I had to fulfill and things doubled. We were scrambling. I mean, we were 
being late, our quality just dropped. Mm. I mean, my employees were super tired. Um, dispatch was just going crazy. I mean, it was just a mess. It was a mess, and it wasn't a mess for a day. I mean, it was a mess. I mean, I mean, I think before we got it all under control, I mean, we had burned a good, a, a good section of our reputation oh, no. by being the late, by becoming the late guys. When previous to that, we were, you know, the the, the quality company, mm -hmm. the guys that were on point, the you know, uniform and everything. Everybody right. was just stressed out. So you can't perform the same way if you say yes to everything. Right. Um, now here's here's the kicker. They had a um, accounts um, payable forty five days. So we were providing service and not even getting paid. Mm -hmm. So my overhead doubled as well overnight. Right. Um, double, you know, double overhead, double fulfillment, um, and then extended pays for like the longest you know, 45 days of the world. Uh, it was just, <laughs> I mean, it was just horrible for, right. but it's because they said yes too soon. I should have not said yes to that contract or tapered it out, one of the two. Um, so, so if you were to restructure that, how, how would you, looking you know, hindsight 2020, how would you restructure that? Uh, if I would have had, if I would have given myself two weeks to prep for it, I would have been okay. Because I, I didn't have, I didn't have all the funds in my bank account, but I knew where to tap into for mm -hmm. funds. So I could get more vehicle and then do hires because we had a process in place. But we literally said yes, and then the next day they dumped this whole thing on us, and it, it was just hard to fulfill and recover from it. So that whole month that we were doing it, I mean, I started those motions right away, right? And, you know, getting more employees and then uh, funding and, and all that stuff. I started that right away, but it took us about a month to, to, to get over okay. that, you know, that big mess that we just created at the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I were to restructure it, I mean, I would say taper it, one, or if they're not willing to do that, I would have said no to the, to the contract. Just completely. Yeah, completely said no. I mean, I, at this level, anybody who knows me, who works close to me, knows that I pick my headaches. Mm -hmm. uh, I automate as much as I can uh, <laughs> and, and delegate, you know, the other part. And then I do the stuff that I enjoy, but it's because I've learned some, you know, tough lessons along the way. Absolutely. One of them was that. Control growth. I mean, it, in opportunity, for example, in real estate, you start looking, all right, what market can I tap into it? You know, <laughs> it, it, yeah, this looks sexy. I'm going to do this, this, and that, and then I'm going to tap into that one, and then I'm going to own the world. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it, it's, I like to gauge it. At least that's my personal preference, right? People have sure. their own, but mine is to to pick the level of my headaches. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like, all right, what kind, what kind of, how heavy do I want my headaches? Sure. And do those headaches go along with with the type of life that I want to live? Uh, do I have enough, you know, freedom, fulfillment, happiness, and joy right now, or do I need to, you know, crank it up a notch? Sure. And I don't, those are gauges, but it's it's through those lessons. And one of the biggest ones being control growth. Uh, what you're doing right now, man, it, it's those thirty thousand dollars that you spent, or over thirty thousand. Trust me, I think it's going to be the best investment so uh, scary, it, of your whole life <laughs> because it's it's setting you up at the right time. Mm -hmm. So you're going to learn a ton more lessons as you have your business, as you deal with employees, oh, as sure. you all that. But but just setting up that platform, um, it's going to save you tenfold, to say the least, uh, on mm -hmm. on on this journey mm -hmm. that you're in right now. I'm but <laughs> yeah, I'm excited I'm so for saving glad. money. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing those Benjamins roll in. No, it's oh. it's pretty cool. I love it. I love it. Um, and um, so you have um, I mean, you have you have a vision right now. You have a one year um, yeah. laid out. Now, what's going through your head as as you get um, ready to tackle on all this stuff? What are the biggest challenges my, my, that you that you're kind of foreseeing right now? My number one thought is no, not yet. Okay. All the time. Hey, we should go and meet this person. No, not yet. Hey, we should go do this. No, not yet. Hey, we should go spend more money on Facebook ads. No, not yet. Hey, we should go, you know, do Absolutely. this, do that, do this, do that. Because, uh, you know, having your MVP, your minimum viable product. Yeah, we want to raise money. Yes, we want to hold summits. Yes, we want to get, you know, the crew together and, and really mingle our people, our staff in the future with our clients and our clients with each other, right? Mm -hmm. We would love to form a syndication with all of our clients that we know all their books. We would love to form partnerships with wholesalers that say, hey, I've got the best cash buyers list. I know who's qualified to buy a house right now. I know who's about to sell. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I want to form partnerships with lenders. Yeah, I'd lend on these guys. They're rock stars. I want to form partnerships with underwriters that say, when they see the REI bookkeeper's logo on a paper, 
Okay, I'm That's gonna, an I'm order. Gonna, I'm yeah, gonna skim man. through this. This is gonna be a flyby underwrite because yeah. we know the quality of work they do. For sure. Mm-hmm. But meeting those people right now, I'd look like a fool, right? We have a couple clients, it's me and Kat. We don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the people, we don't have the resources to do something like that. So now it's taking care of the clients we have now. Then we're gonna, you know, get more clients and then more clients and take care of each person as they come in and naturally grow rather than forcing the growth. I like how committed you guys are to that, uh, to the long-term play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, instant gratification, I mean, it kills more dreams than, <laughs> than I can count. It, yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah, we get, let's get rich overnight, and it's, that's why I hustle. I do this and hustle this, hustle that. Yeah, I mean, that's gonna take you to a place, and, and, and it's gonna work, but it's not sustainable. What you guys are doing yeah. right now, I think, just looking at it from that, from that um, you know, space, okay, we're gonna tackle on this now. This is stage one, stage two, stage three, Absolutely. and uh, I mean that's a long term play. I mean not everybody's willing to play that game. For sure. It's hard. I mean I think I think that's where it's gonna work. It's yeah. a lot of sacrifice. Well, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Is one of like, yeah, a couple challenges I go through my head is, um, are we providing like the best quality that we can? Right. Like I don't want to miss a phone call from a client and then they're frustrated or something like that. Right. Like I want to provide the utmost like 100 percent service that we're able to offer um but i want to do that for everybody Mm -hmm. so if i'm feeling like i'm falling on like one person and they're getting frustrated and now it's just kind of like uh we're like butting heads because there's a miscommunication or just not quality of work then that's where it's like hey we need to like pump the brakes a little bit and take care of these people we have now and get all of this situated before we go and grow um so that's probably like one of my biggest challenges and then the other one that i've thought of is like we won't be good enough or like all these people are just so expansive in what they're doing they've got seven streams of income and are just like rock stars and everything that they're doing and it's us coming in and saying like hey we'll take care of this small part of your business for you is that okay or just like the the confidence that I have to build up to be like, hey, like we have value, you have value, we can come together and work this out is something that I'll probably always be working on. So. Well, I mean, I think confidence really comes down to, to counting your wins. For sure. Uh, so as you're, as you're stacking stuff up right now in, in your business, as you're, you get to your first yes, as you get to your first, you know, when my first check came in that, <laughs> and it was a very small I think I got paid like 27 bucks or something like on, one, <laughs> oh, nice. on one transport because like, I was a, I was a, I was a driver yeah. exactly I mean it popped my chair that's why it meant so much um, I was the uh, I was a driver of the of that wheelchair vehicle and I was a mechanic I was a dispatcher I was everything nice. uh, I mean, bootstrapped it and yeah. um, and uh, but when that first check came in and it said, I mean, it was coming from government funding. It was a contract that I had acquired. I was like, I didn't see the twenty-seven bucks. I was like, <laughs> hell excited! <laughs> yeah. I didn't see the twenty-seven bucks. I saw freedom. I saw, you know, oh my God. like yes, I like I saw my whole team, my employees, the you know, forty vehicles, and that's what I saw with those twenty-seven bucks. But that's that's a win. So that little win, those twenty-seven bucks, have yeah. paid themselves over and over again. For it's sure. it's, uh, and I think that's that gave me the confidence to to bring on somebody else and then sure. uh, create a training process and then you know plug somebody you know into that training process and then have the confidence to build you know on top of what I was building already but I think um, I just uh, talked about this in another video it's it's uh, it's counting those wins mm-hmm. sure. and stacking them like if they were bricks <laughs> so you're building up your big ass building of success right yeah. of, of, uh, and that's gonna be your entrepreneur castle but the bricks to that are the little wins even the little ones, the twenty-seven dollar ones, are yeah. Yeah. perfectly. Every yeah, day. You're like boom. This is what happened today. Oh, we got this call. Oh, we got this <laughs> this feedback. Oh, I got this testimonial from a person. You know what? They sent me a text, and and then next thing you know, you have, you know, three or four rooms built out, and um, and it's just getting higher and higher. But that's that's. I think that's a way to to um, to get to that confidence. For sure. Um, it's not it's not free. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't you don't it's wake up one day and say I'm gonna castle. crush it for all my clients. I mean you're dealing with people's money here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, but it, it's uh, it, I mean you're right you're on point. I think. And this point. has helped honestly. There was probably <clears> what, <throat> two maybe three weeks ago, we had all this chaos going on. You know, onboarding clients, signing like we signed up like in a two week span. We just signed up a bunch of clients. Um, I've got rehabs going on. You know. We're 
building partnerships and setting up podcasts and doing marketing and Facebook lives and doing all this stuff. And it's easy to be like, what is going on? And so I went and I opened this. It was like, I don't know, 7 p.m. Kat and I both had long couple weeks and I was like, yeah. Kat, we're doing really good. Our six month goal we've already hit. She's mm-hmm. like, really? I was like, yeah, we've hit that six month goal already. Yeah. Like we're gonna have to review our one year goal at the end of this year. Mm-hmm. And we're so excited about that because something I think of when you when you say that, you know, the culture and that twenty seven dollars isn't it's not a dollar. Like it, <laughs> yeah. it, that is no, irrelevant. It's, yeah. It's it's what it means. And being honest with what drives you, um, to me has been probably the most powerful thing because it's easy to go look at the books and see seven LLCs and 500 transactions and it's all a mess and they're spending money here and there and it's a complete shit show which is why they haven't done it yeah right like that's why they haven't done it we're bringing on these problems and it's easy to look at these and be like what in the world is going on bro yeah Yeah. (laughs) but what how is it I know I know how my account is (laughs) 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 saw it the first time yeah Yeah. so it's but, but what's the reason why Right. What's the end result? Why are we doing this? We're not doing this because everybody wants their book straight. We're doing this because that investor is trying to grow. They're trying to build their empire. There are bookkeepers out there that are struggling. There there are bookkeepers trying to run their own business that don't have the confidence to tell a client no. So they get spread too thin. They don't have time to create the processes. Mm -hmm. They're not confident enough to hire that, that person. So definitely part of what drives me is going and finding those bookkeepers that are struggling and mm-hmm. saying, hey, we've got it down. You like bookkeeping, we have the framework, we have the how. And the sto- what drives me 100% is the stories of, I wanna be able to pay, hey, you're a bookkeeper now, single mom, you wanna get your CPA license, we'll pay for it. Mm. You're driving that 2002 <clears throat> Ford Focus and the tires flat and the engine's about to blow. Let's, let's get you more clients, let's build your business and let's get you a safe car for your, for your child you know what I mean like those are what excite me absolutely man I think I think I like what you're doing with this because you're going beyond the uh, the taskiness of things you're going beyond the uh, again you're playing in a in a very traditional field but you're not doing it in a traditional way absolutely not and that's that's a spark that's the magic that's that's really what's gonna carry you through the through the bad times, through the days that you don't feel like doing, you know, your stuff or the tasky <laughs> stuff. Like, ah, oh, I know I gotta make the phone calls, and, and you don't feel like doing the phone calls. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that looking at that, you know, holding that in your head um, as the the, the bigger uh, picture, it's gonna it's gonna get you through those. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. So, I love it. And you're a testimonial for that. You've been through it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and um, I'm growing pains, man. Like through my twenties, my uh, I think I think I got the best like ten year education in entrepreneurship. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> so through my twenties, so I, I didn't I didn't start getting like proficient at uh, being being an entrepreneur and doing business and actually you know, operating that way mm-hmm. until I hit my thirties. I mean, but my twenties were just like I don't know what that happened. I turned th- yeah I turned thirty and then all of a sudden I matured. Nice. <laughs> yes. Love it. I am a I am a grown man now. I'm here. So if you, if you were to look back on your 25 year old self or your 21 year old self in business, what would you tell tell yourself? Reach out to people. Um, I wasn't talking. I, I never asked for help. That was my, one of my biggest biggest mistakes, and it cost me a lot of money. I never asked for help. Um, I always had. Um, I resonate with what you're saying about figure it out. Oh yeah. More than you know. <laughs> I always, I've always had that thing. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to do it, but I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out. And I'll tap into every book, look into every link, and then spend whatever I need to spend in terms of you know time or whatever figuring out something instead of asking, "Hey, do you know how to do this?" <laughs> and um, yeah. and that's I mean that's really it's been one of the biggest like things for me to 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 overcome. So sure. reaching out to the people that know a lot more than I do. Um, it wasn't really an ego play for me. It was more of a uh, uh, lack of confidence. Mm-hmm. Sure. And, and I was like, no, I, I feel silly asking this. This is a stupid question. Mm-hmm. There's no stupid questions. 
Yeah, that fear, of, all the just, fear of rejection. Yeah, there's, there's just, it's just questions. Mm -hmm. and, um, and people are going to be proficient at the stuff that you're not proficient at. So you can go to somebody else and ask them. People don't know the stuff that you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know the stuff that you know. I don't know the stuff that you know. Mm -hmm. um, you're great at you know, stuff that I'm never going to be great at. And, <laughs> and, and, it's, it, it, it's, yeah. it's, and that's <laughs> just how it goes, you know what I mean? So asking, if I were to tell myself something when I was you know, 20, 25, would be like, bro, just reach out, you know, find out. You don't know who does it. Find out who does it instead of figuring, you know, spending six months figuring this shit out. Just, you know, spend two days figuring out who's doing it and find a way to talk to that person and then, you know, create that relationship. Um, through my 20s, lonely, super lonely. I mean, in terms of, of uh, who to talk to, uh, I mean, not emotionally, oh, like okay. relationship-wise, no, I was good. good. <laughs> but, but it's entrepreneurship can be a very lonely place. And oh, yeah. I didn't have, um, I didn't join my first mastermind until I was, I think, uh, maybe 20, 28, 29. Uh, and that was just insane. To me, it was a, nice. a game changer. Uh, but yeah, my, I started the business when I was 21. Um, got my first big client when I was 23, so that tells you the start. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> But it, it's, those years were just, you know, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. And I, I, I still like to play with that, and I say play with it, because now I choose to get into that space. Like, all right, cool, I'm going to play with it, see if I can figure it out. But if it's taking too much and being counterproductive, like, f fuck that. I'll just, you know, yeah. reach out to somebody who's way better than me at it, and then I'll get an answer. So now that you're 10 years, you know, how many years into the process, you have people come to you and ask you questions, right? Like, how, why? 17. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh, that's your 17 years. Yeah, I'm 37. Project? I started when I was well, 16 years. Yeah. 16 years. Yeah. When somebody comes and asks you that question and you help them, how does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel great, actually. It, yeah. uh, it, um, one of my uh, purposes, and I say one, right? But it's it's to empower entrepreneurship. That's what I'm doing right now with this conversation. For sure. Absolutely. So if I have a conversation with anybody who's who's thinking of becoming an entrepreneur and I, they feel empowered by the time they walk away even if it's with one thing I said one thing I dropped on a video I've, I'm, I'm fulfilling I'm getting one one step closer to that purpose mm -hmm. so when I don't feel like you know doing content when I don't feel like you know recording a video <laughs> or, or you know oh I gotta go and then do, do this thing that's gonna be out there I don't even know if it's gonna pay out man but I'm putting it out there still because I'm following that that um, that path towards that purpose, which is the same thing that you guys are doing yeah. when you're saying that you wanna you know, give freedom to that CPA and then pay for their stuff so mm -hmm. they can come in and change their lives through what you're doing, through mm -hmm. your work. Mm -hmm. And I ask so. that question because at 21, it sounds like you wouldn't reach out because you were afraid of them being like, you're an idiot. Why are, yeah. you, why are you asking me these questions? But now that Absolutely. you're there, you a, lot of guys, no, like, a lot of guys are, a lot of guys are like, come ask me for help. They want I, to help it. It's I, part of, Part of what I've noticed, a lot of entrepreneurs and business people, is it's part of giving back. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you do the work, you learn, you educate, and you're like, how can I help not only my kids, but the complete next generation? Absolutely. Which for you is us. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it, it really comes down to, to kind of, you know, paying it forward. So we have different needs, right, as we're... As we're progressing through life not just you know business but we have different leads when we're starting off especially if we're, if we're bootstrapping something mm -hmm. we'll um we'll i mean we'll go through a survival stage where you know we have certain priorities and, and this is this is what's really taking up our, our spy uh, our spice our space <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a spanish <laughs> <laughs> yes. um so it's uh and you go through that and then you know you hit, you know, you transition into another stage where maybe you reach some, you know, financial success, and then okay, cool, I wanna, uh, I wanna, you know, tap into this group of people, and and then you know, just provide there. But it just, mm -hmm. you know, it starts changing as it evolves as you evolve, and and you get to a point where I mean, you really want to do it all and then have a big impact. Still, like for me right now, it's holding the 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 type of life that I wanna that I wanna live, right? That, that, sure. I mean, I'm not a super stressed out guy. That's not my vibe. <laughs> I know who I am when I'm in that space, and I don't I don't like, like to be in that, that. space, right? Yeah. So I, I I'll mitigate stuff so I, I stay away from that. But sure. but I still want to contribute. I still want to give back, and and then you know you find ways of doing that. So. It's incredible the amount of people that have, for example, access to, to me, to Brent, and all these guys, and, and they, they won't reach out for help. Like, just ask a question, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has, it's going to save you time. It's going to save you <laughs> money. It's going to save you headaches. Yeah, yeah so right. tap, reach back out to whoever uh, knows more about whatever you're tapping into. Um, biggest, I mean, it'd be the biggest advice for me. Because, I mean, that company, I literally got one 
I paid 600 bucks for one course that was mm -hmm. like eight videos or something like nice. that. That's before courses were popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, that's all I had to go on. That's that, that was it. That was the only guidance. Everything else was just kind of, I was putting it together as, as I went by. All right, I saw this problem, figured it out, and then I wrote <laughs> it down, uh, bullet points on it, and then highlighted some stuff and then made it a process. And and that's how the, the business went. But it, I mean, it was a lot of trial and error. It got expensive. Sure. Just ask for help. Yeah. <laughs> Just ask. Call yeah. the guy that After made the course. Do not be shy to ask people for help. Uh, if they're not giving you an answer, you're in the wrong group. Get the fuck out of there and get, you know, find, find some other people else. that you can talk to. Because people, well, the successful people out there, they're not going to be, they're not going to have a problem sharing what they know. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, they're not in that state of mind. Yeah. yeah. You know, whoever's really doing it, whoever's really, you know, thriving and living their life, their yeah. full lives, they, they want to pay it forward. You know, sure. they don't want to. I'm going gonna, gonna to go out on a limb and say that. And the people that guys like you look at and want to give advice to are the guys that take your advice and implement it. Yeah. Because oh. how disrespectful is it for somebody like me to come to you and say, Raphael, I've got this problem, and you spend an hour telling me. Kills exactly me. what to do, Kills and me. then I go, and six months later, you're like, "Oh, how's it going?" Like, you're, you're, oh, I so you're saying that? <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, exactly. I mean, don't don't be rude and like take the and actually take action. Go do it. But go do it exactly. But it, it's, um, th I mean, that's also one of the things, and it comes with coaching. I mean, the, it's. It's kind of like the love-hate relationship if, if, um, if you do any coaching. Like I do coaching, and some, some people will have all the tools. They have everything in front of them, the access, the e everything but the, you know, just swinging the hammer. You know? right. mm -hmm. And, and it's, they still won't own their results. And, that's, that, and that really breaks you. It's like, all right, cool. I mean, it's just you can't, like they say, right, you can't take a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Right. And, and I mean, yeah, I mean, but it's, I mean, it's just part of the process. I mean, I, I, I choose to be, a, to come into a relationship on, on the right note, as opposed to being skeptic, skeptic skeptical. about whether or not they're going to make it. Mm -hmm. So just, you know. And the opportunity yeah. to see if they take it. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Like so now why did you switch this interview on me? I know, I was thinking <laughs> about that. <laughs> Jeez. Smart man. Mm -hmm. No, so um, that's awesome. I love what you guys are doing. I love the path. I love how fast um, and steady you guys are going. Uh, control growth is huge. Uh, one thing that I just kind of want to put out there is it, it's, uh, it's some awareness in the different stages of, of business. Sure. So at stage one, um, you have a startup, right? Bootstrap. Mm -hmm. it, Definitely it, bootstrap. Yeah, it, it's my favorite kind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There's more passion in it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> right. yeah. I can do all of the things. Yes, all of the things. <laughs> you know, that's what I keep telling myself. It just makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. It'd be nice just to yeah start a business and to throw ten million dollars into it and they just make it work. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. So passion. But, uh, but when you're in a stage one business, it's, I mean, your priorities as they stack on one, priority one is going to be revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, priority two is going to be people. And then priority three is going to be systems. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important not to get it switched up and then focus more on the systems than the revenue because you're not going to make it out to stage two. For sure. And that's usually based on, on, on the amount of people that you have and, and revenue basis, right? So as you transition to stage two, you have um, your priority is still revenue, but your second priority uh, moves from uh, from people to to systems. So mm -hmm. your second priority, that's where you start focusing a little more on. Okay, I'm, I got to dial in my process. You already picked up, you know, two or three employees employees on stage one, but in stage two, you're fine tuning the roles. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, making it leaner. You know, mm -hmm. dialing in the process and doing all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then um, at stage three, the people go up to level one mm -hmm. because the revenue is, is sustainable. You already have an engine in place. Um, the systems, you know, they're they're there. So now you focus on the um, on on onboarding more people and actually growing it through through that. You know, and this is not this is not saying that uh, that you don't take care of your employees. Mm -hmm. No, what yeah. I mean is it's uh, by by the amount like the pace at where you're hiring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's kind of that's kind of how it pans out. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I wish you guys the best. You guys are rocking it. So thank so, you. Um, now, if you guys were walking down the street and you were to run into your 17-year-old self, oh my what gosh. would you tell that kid? That's, that's, that's my favorite question. 17-year-old <laughs> 17? Yeah, at 17, I owned the world. 
Like, you did? Oh, absolutely. Nobody okay. could tell me that I wasn't going to do, you know, whatever I wanted. <laughs> whatever you wanted, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So wow. any, anytime I feel lost, I go back to my 17-year-old self, and I'm, I'm still I'm Superman. <laughs> I'm, nice. Yeah, I'm 17 all the time. I'm going to die 17. Nice. <laughs> I love it. Wow, 17. I was not, I didn't talk a lot at 17. I was very shy, very timid, very, I didn't know, I didn't. I didn't know. Nobody around me was really doing anything. Nothing really made sense. Like, mm -hmm. I was super confused at 17. Yeah. Um, so you were confused. What would you tell that kid? I know. That's what I'm trying to think. If I would, I don't know. What do you say? It doesn't have what to be business. Think? Gosh, yeah. I'm, like, trying to put my... Advice. I'm, like, trying to get back to my, like, 17-year-old headspace. Man, if I was... Be more courageous. Go do it. Oh, love it. Go do it. You have nothing to lose. What do you have? You have a couple hundred bucks in a freaking car. Oh, you're yeah. balling. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, oh, the, the car was bought at a You don't have to brag. <laughs> the car was bought at a junkyard for, for, for $900. <laughs> I paid $450. My mom loaned me the $450 to make it, make it work, and I was paying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but, like, just go do it. And, oh. I, I mean, when I was young, when I was, like, young, Probably 16, 17, uh, yeah. when, I, when I got my license, my brother and I would go, you know, knock doors, see if somebody wanted their car washed or their landscape done. God. We would do it. We would yeah. go out and we would do it. Here's the problem. After 10 no's, we were like, fuck this. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you. <laughs> but we were like, screw this. I'm out, right? Like, I'm not, I'm done. This is not worth our time. Like, we want to go yeah. jump our BMX bikes off. Yeah, do something, yeah, do something you, fun. But, like, keep going. Like, mm -hmm. it'll work. Like, keep going. Keep chipping at it. Don't let all those no's push you away from what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have kept right. going. I love it. Oh, my gosh. What about you? Again, here? yeah. How do I piggyback off that one? <laughs> um, you got to step up your game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Man. At 17... Uh, I would probably tell myself just to like explore more right like I had a very like set future for myself and it, it was like high school college job and nothing mm -hmm. outside of that and so for me like I didn't know like I didn't have an imagination really of like all the endless job opportunities there were or business opportunities that there were and I was just like set on this one path and just walking along what somebody else had set up for me so for me it would just be to like explore everything if you, if you even had like an inkling of an interest in it then go and research that or like put some energy toward it and and again like with the mindset of like what is there to lose mm -hmm. so I would just say like be more like just curious in in all the things that you even had a thought about. So. Nice. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So um, if somebody wants to get a hold of you guys, oh, um, yeah. how do uh, how do they do it? Cool. Instagram <coughs> at the REI Bookkeepers. Yes. Um, our emails, Matt at the REI Bookkeepers and Catherine at the REI Bookkeepers. Yeah. Or text us. My number is 928-293-0794. Shoot me a text. Yeah. Boom. You can't say you're hiding. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm here. <laughs> no, I we'll, put, sure. we'll put all that stuff in the show yeah. notes. Yeah, I want to um, talk to everybody. Yeah, and I and I know you you had a you had a five tips yeah. or, or seven actually. Seven. It says five here, and then yeah. you did seven yeah. overachiever. Yeah. Overachiever, Calm you. Down, Calm down, Calm down, Mister Hundred yeah. Bucks, and, no, and, and a car at seventeen. <laughs> I mean, I actually also had. A, yeah, my parents bought it for me, but I had a black F one fifty, and I was balling uh, in that truck. Oh, I loved it so much. I had a, and just because you guys brought it up. <laughs> but, what yeah, was what your car? car? But I had a, I had a, a glamorous 1984 Bronco too, with uh, chipped off paint, um, and it was I mean it was an old car, yeah. but uh, the tranny was busted for like oh, the longest no. time. So it would get it would it would be in first gear. It was automatic, and it would be on first gear until I think I I think like, I had to hit like 30 miles an hour. So it would shift, and it would skip second and third, and then go straight to fourth. And, uh, <laughs> oh my 
my God. And yeah, so I had to park it. If I didn't want it to, like, and this is all my friends. I mean, of course, we would carpool in my broke car to school. <laughs> and school was 30 miles away. So, oh, my Lord. So, uh, so I would have to park it on a downhill if I just wanted to coast out of the, free, uh, out of the parking lot, right? <laughs> um, if not, we, I, I would have to, like, just step on it. And it would sound like, imagine a sound going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> and I'm moving two miles an hour through the park. <laughs> through the park. True story. Yeah, yeah, True like... story. Yes. And, and, and I'm just waving at my friends. <laughs> they're walking past me. Yeah, you, they're walking past me. And I'm like, <laughs> 30 miles, you know, come around and then boom, it would just hit and then I would just start driving. Oh my <laughs> yeah, but gosh. that was my, my high school experience for, for a long time. Nice. Loved That's it. Incredible. Amazing. Yeah, we so, wanted to bring something tips. of value. This is. Although we are, you know, real estate focused, real estate investment focused, this is for any business. Yeah. Um, these are just tips, setting up your bookkeeping. These are my oh, seven, seven tips. So one, leave spreadsheet, spreadsheet land, spreadsheet island, whatever you want to call it, get out of it. Leave, <laughs> jump on the boat, jump in your Bronco too, slam <laughs> the gas as fast as you can and get out of it. Um, after 30 miles. After yeah, 30 yeah, miles, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just leave spreadsheet land. Um, so many aspects of the business, and especially the startup stage, are going to be on spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. Your customers, right, Matthew? your accountants, <laughs> everything. Get out of that as fast as you can. Go pay the $30, $50, $70 a month to go on a cloud-based system. It's worth every penny. Maybe now it's going to be like, ooh, that hurts. But in a year when you stay committed, it's going to save you so much time, heartache, headache, stress. money, stress, everything. Um, two, Create the correct chart of accounts. Mm. I'm gonna. I would put my money that there isn't an industry out there that doesn't have a chart of accounts created for the right. cloud-based software that you're gonna use. Mm. Go find one. If you yeah. need one for real estate, you can email Kat, Catherine at the reibookkeepers.com. Uh, we have one specifically for real estate investors. Make sure that's set up correctly. Say that link again. Catherine? No, the uh, the. Did you have a website or? Yeah, the reibookkeepers.com. <coughs> okay. Yep. Every button you click on, that's going to go to a contact us page. Beautiful. Submit it. It goes straight to me. Beautiful. So <laughs> any button you press is going to go to me. Um, keep your personal expenses separate um, as much as you can. You're going to have an LLC, and you're going to have your personal bank account and your business bank account. If the business needs money, just try to transfer money to the bank account before you spend it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be difficult, but do your best. Um, this one's for real estate specifically. Enter your HUDs first. If you bought a property or refinanced it, put the HUD in first because that's going to create the, the class on your balance sheet so that way you can allocate all of your expenses and income towards that property, which is its own little business, mm -hmm. right? Um, keep all your receipts. I don't care if it's in a freaking shoebox. I don't care if it's in the <laughs> side compartment in your your truck, your car, the glove box. Wherever you can uh, keep it, keep it. Keep it in an email. Keep them in a closet. Keep them somewhere. But don't not keep them. Would you agree? Uh, 100%. 100% <laughs> agree. Cool. It's, it's one of those, like... We'll, we'll just keep preaching it and hopefully yeah, like, somebody's going to pick it up. So, <laughs> snag somebody's brain. Now I'm curious though, like with everything being being off, you know, off paper, wh why is it yeah. so important to, to keep your receipts? So for, <laughs> yeah, well, I would say like a lot of places still do receipts, um, specifically for real estate, right? Like Home Depot and Lowe's and all of that will do electronic, which is mm -hmm. totally cool. And, and you can keep them that way. Um, and your, the paper in your, in your pro account, mm -hmm. and the yeah. paper is not necessary in that case, right? But there's, um, and a lot of things are like being paid online, which is awesome. Like everything electronic, I'm a super huge fan of. Um, but anything that's not electronic or you can't reference in an email or something like that, that gotcha. uh, or a bank account or something for like sure, that. yeah. yeah. Um, then it's just like a reference. It's something to be like, oh, this expense was. Mm -hmm. four and a half months ago and I can't remember what it's for let me go check and that kind of thing gotcha. um, so but yeah for electronic receipts and all of that like a huge fan of just make sure like you're not deleting emails or anything like that it's just a great way to um, 
if you are like backtracking on any of your bookkeeping, it's uh, oh, I don't have that great of a memory, so I can go look. Right? <laughs> gotcha. And I'll take yeah. this to why I have it on my <coughs> list is how many JV deals do you ever see in real estate? Oh, eighty yeah. percent, right? Yeah. Hey, let's partner on this flip. Let's partner on this rental. Let's partner on this wholesale deal. Whatever the case is. Yeah. Um, here's what happens a lot in real estate: two guys partner on a, on a flip. One guy does the accounting. The other guy doesn't care about the accounting because he just wants to make some money. He's a doer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy yes. that's doing the accounting has all the freedom in the world to kind of do whatever he wants, which is part of you know one reason why you can hire a bookkeeper. But the the other business partner should have somebody on their team or them themselves say, okay, if there's an expense, I want to see all the receipts for these. Right. And so I have that in there specifically for partnerships mm. because... So that they sail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that way partnerships sail. Yeah. So that's why I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, be consistent. Number one thing, be consistent. Don't wait till freaking April 14th to get all your bookkeeping done for the last year and your CPA is going to come to your house and hold a gun to your head because... What's wrong with that? They got a file on the fifteenth of April, and oh, Lord. you're gonna have this. Oh, you know, we're gonna have to have a separate <laughs> conversation here. About that. What do you mean? That's not a, that's not a thing. No, that's not a thing. Well, is it, it is, is a thing. Isn't, yeah, isn't that what I'm supposed yeah. to do? Yeah, right? No, it is a thing. That's the problem. We wanted it to not be a thing. So yeah, be consistent. Do it. Do it biweekly. Do it yeah. monthly. Whatever the case mm -hmm. is, be consistent. Set it up. Do it. It might be the worst thing in the world, which is why I come with my bonus. Delegate it. If you absolutely hate sitting down, you'd rather go run a marathon than sit down and do your books, delegate it. Spend a couple hundred dollars every month, sure. get it done. You're going to have more clarity. You're going to have more time. You're going to do more deals. You're going to make more money. You're going to sleep better at night. You're going to no be happier. Audits. You're not going to get a <laughs> no divorce. No audits. Yeah, no divorces. I, I, no raise, I raise this off your yeah. back. Yeah. 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 Every, absolutely worth it. Yeah. Everybody's going to be happier. Yeah. 100%. Sure. Absolutely worth it. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for the conversation. Thank yeah. you for the tips. Um, again, I love where you guys are headed and, uh, and it's just amazing to see it. So thank you. Um, we got to do a follow up here. I don't know, six months into it or Ooh. something. But yeah, if you guys are, are down, uh, sure. let's let's set it up from uh, let's commit to it right now. Uh, and we'll figure out a time and date later. Awesome. But, but uh, yeah, six months from, we'll now. Six months from now, we'll see where you guys are at. I love yeah. it. Right. Thank you, Raphael. Boom. Yeah, thank you. There you guys have it on the CEO Plus podcast where you get the real, the raw, and the mind of entrepreneurship. The Matt and Cat Show. Hey. It's <laughs> a wrap. Sweet. Thank you, sir. That was yeah, fun. Thanks. You just got a backstage pass to the real, the raw, and the mind of entrepreneurship. Make sure you follow us on YouTube and iTunes and check out our website at ceopulse.com. Stay tuned, stay focused, you got this.